so the final 72 hours of trading for 2017 starts as we speak. So we got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, then we're done for the year. And it's been a very a nice one. It's been a very beautiful and a bullish year for the equity side of the market. Almost everybody made money uh, this year. Uh, from uh, fixed income, buying treasury bills, or doing bonds, or, and the equities will still most likely hold on to that 40 percent psychological level. We may not get uh, 40,000 uh, on the index level uh, within the remaining three days, but we're going to get a very decent uh, um, uh, uh, final full year outing, and then everyone can, can log off for the year and look into what 2018 will look like in terms of the playbook. Let's uh, start this conversation. It's going to be on uh, throughout this week, and next we're going to look at the different portfolios and asset classes and try to give you what the playbook should, will look like for each of these uh, markets in the new year. Let's uh, start this with the head of investment at Codros Capital, Bola Haino. He's live here in the studios with us to start on the equity side of things. Good morning. Morning, hope, you hope, hope you had a very nice holiday, despite yes, the, the, yes, the petrol. Yes. Uh, 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 so let's start with the, with the petrol, the listed petrol companies, uh, and that's the oil and gas. Uh, what do you think would the market will be considering and thinking now as we move into the new year with these big oil retailers and energy companies, Wando, MRS, um, Mobile, Total, with the exception of Seplat? Well, um, for a lot of us, or for some of our investors as well, most of them have not been too big in the oil and gas um, sector. And obviously, we, we can see the reasons. Um, for a lot of them, they have to grapple with um, foreign exchange. Um, they also have to grapple with distribution costs. Um, so for the big play in the equity market has always been the banks. We expect that to still go on forward. In terms of how the oil energy mix has gone this year, Really, I think it's more of a repetition. Last year as well, I think we're in a similar situation. So I don't think um, the oil and gas companies, I don't expect so much from them next year. Um, one though, that, that's not going to be a big play? No, no big play. Maybe even for the likes of Seplat, but Seplat is not um, majorly downstream. Um, so for the downstream, I don't expect any big play. So, so, so for investors and uh, your clients who, has, who holds, on, who holds uh, some of these uh, uh, oil and gas retailer energy companies, you're not likely to see anyone coming in big and say, hey, I want to move some big volume in, the, in, in, that, in that sector. Well, I don't, I don't think so. At least based on available information that I have now, mm. I don't think so. Um, for some of them, they've been showing interest in the likes of Seplat um, for obvious reasons. Um, but a lot of them, they've been quite um, risk averse in some of the other oil and gas um, equi equities. Well, understandably, because uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be uh, happy with any of those uh, oil retailers uh, if I hold their shares. I, I don't see any sentiment or any fundamentals to actually uh, uh, put them in my playbook uh, for the new year. So let's talk about the, the leading sectors and the big caps. Do you think they will remain in the play in the new year? Would they be on your playbook? Yeah, definitely. Um, like you said, this year has been a very good year for equity markets. And not just equity markets, all the markets, um, fixed income market as well. Uh, we've seen prices rally this year. Um, yields were 22% when we started the year. They've come as low as 14%. There was an OMO auction today, and um, the Apex Bank, they are issuing, I think, a 267 day paper at 14.7. Um, if you recall, about three months ago, those papers were going for 17.8. So yields are coming down which of course is good for people that are already holding that instrument, which means they are making gains on their fixed income in investments. For the equity market, like you said, it's gained over 40% year to date on the back of improved forex liquidity, on the back of improved um, investor sentiments, also on the back of the fact that we've seen GDP um, recovery. So we expect next year to be the same. Next year, you know, is a pre-election year as well. So they're going to be spending. Um, next year is also going to be the biggest um, budget in history, 8.6 trillion, although I don't think that is achievable. But of course, in terms of spending, that's huge, 8.6 trillion um, um, naira for the budget. Um, we've seen oil price also recovered, steady at $65 um, um, dollar per barrel. And of course, we expect that to remain stable next year. So things are looking pretty good for um, equity markets. One thing that really drives the equity market is one, oil price, one is the exchange rate. Exchange rate is very stable. The NAFEX window has also been very, very stable. So on the back of that, we, we expect to see um, a sustained um, equity performance in 2018. Maybe not as aggressive as we've seen it in 2017, but of course we still expect it to be positive. What, what do you see as the catalyst here? What do you think will be the catalyst for the banks, for the commercial banks? Well, so for the commercial banks, we expect uh, NPR want to be reduced. 
maybe not in the first two meetings, because really there's still a concern about um, real interest rate, there's still a concern about exchange rate stability. So I think the um, APS Bank, they still need to watch the space very, very closely. But of course, when we see rates come down, that means we expect NPLs to also reduce from the banking sector as well. Uh, we've seen economic recovery as well, so we expect them. Um, if the economy is growing, we expect the banks to, to grow as well because where they are the middleman, they are the ones that move money from the deficit sector, from the surplus sector rather, to the deficit sector. And the, and the surplus sector next year, 2018, will be the political sector. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So, so with the money from the political sector, the banks will be there to transmit this money and it goes into various hands. Definitely. And like you were saying earlier on, um, really there's been renewed confidence in, in the equity market. We've seen a lot of foreign investors come in, both in the equity market and the fixed income market, really on the back of improved forest liquidity. Um, capital importation figures for Q3 was 4.2 billion. The quarter before that was just 1.8 billion. The year before that was 1.8 billion. So in terms of capital inflows, is huge. That's FPIs, and we think it's going to be sustained. So I think for equity markets, it's more like a green light. I think um, there's a lot of diamonds in the rough, and I'm, I'm quite positive that next year is going to be under um, successful year. Maybe not, not a, maybe not a 40%, but like a 20%. Well, 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 like a 20%. I'm going to write that somewhere. Uh, you're looking at the, uh, uh, the oil share index for 2018 at about that, isn't it? Yes. 2018. Okay, I'm going to write that against your name. I'm going to start taking uh, you folks' opinion uh, as to what the also returns will be, 20%. Okay, but we're still among the big caps and talking about the big caps. Uh, uh, do you see any headroom for further uh, pricing or valuation, uh, more appropriately uh, said, for the big caps on, the mar on, on our market? Yes, but it's not going to be as bullish as we've seen this year. For a lot of them, I think um, the valuations are stretched. Um, so for the likes of the big banks, um, GTB, Zenit Bank, so in terms of upside that we saw this year might not be as um, huge, but I, th I, think, I still think there's potential upside because really the banking sector has about 40% of the old total market capitalization, so really can't ignore the banks. So I still expect um, to see some plays in the likes of GTB, Zenit Bank, Access Bank and UBA, they have been quite resilient in recent times. Um, Dangote's Cement, obviously, um, I'm still going to pitch my tent with them. And down to sugar, current valuations are very, very attractive. Well, why can't I see any of the banks, or the big banks? It's here, one banks. I'm looking for a 100 Naira GT Bank, Zenith, or UBA. Am I too ambitious? Well, you're over-ambitious. Over-ambitious? Yeah. 100? 